Okay, so this is the last screencast. I only have a few more slides to go over. Um, so now that we know that there's this, uh, we want to think about when we design our main instruction, we want to think about providing opportunities for students to learn. And we can think about those opportunities um, in terms of participation to high order thinking ratio. So we can now use that thinking to help us design activities. We know we want to get, we want to try to uh, design activities that um, foster high order or facilitate high order thinking. And we want to try to get as many of our students in the class as possible or as reasonably possible to be active and uh, participatory. But is that, is that, too inconceivable? Is that conceivable? Can we think of actually doing that on a daily basis with our students? Um, you may be asking that or you know, being very skeptical and saying, you know, based on what I'm seeing, that's just totally impossible. It's inconceivable. Um, but I don't want you to think about it that way. I actually think it is um, very possible. Um, and I think it's mainly an issue about um, mindset. Um, anything is possible if you are willing to make it possible, if you're willing to put forth the resources and the energy and the time. Um, there was a time when people didn't think it was possible to go to the moon until someone said, you know what, let's make that a priority. We were going to do that and put in the time and the resources and the opportunity to make that happen. And there was a whole generation that of, of Americans that actually celebrated that cause, that goal to make that happen. Um, I think for you, it is, it is easier to be in an environment where other people are trying to design instructional activities like that. If you're in an environment where that is not the case, where, they're, where they actually have pacing calendars, then yes, it is much more challenging because the people around you are not doing it or doing it in very small doses. But it is possible, and we know this because there are schools like High Tech High that actually um, make it the foundation of what they do. And it's the cornerstone of what they do. They, they decided that that's what um, all the teachers are going to work to try to create activities for the students to do on a daily basis. How can the students be engaged in this in some way with each other or with the teacher? Um, so it is possible. Um, and so keep that in mind. Um, all right. So um, so we talked about opportunity to learn. We talk about engagement to thinking ratio. The last thing that I want to talk about is the notion of an informal assessment. And what I am going to strongly recommend that you do in your lesson plans is that you plan for informal assessment, that you actually plan for ways in which you are going to informally measure what all your students can do as well as what your struggling students do. So come up with very specific targeted assessments for your struggling students, um, specific and targeted assessment for your IEPs, if you have any, and targeted and strategic uh, assessments for your advanced learners. Um, and these are all informal. So it's basically a question that you may ask to a specific person as a way to get them thinking and processing and having an opportunity to respond. Um, so you need to find those ways and you need to plan for it. Put it in the main instruction. I will ask so-and-so this question to see if, if she is making progress in her understanding of Quadratics, quadratic formula or the, the cell, the, um, whatever about the cell. You could, you know, so whatever it is, you just write it up and put it into your instruction. So I highly recommend that. 
in class, you will be um, taking your um, group projects that you did last class and um, expanding it. So you would have had your uh, learning objectives, your formative assessment. Now you're going to come up with what your instructional activity is going to be. And um, I want you to be thinking about it in terms of this um, opportunity to learn. So to think about whether or not you're asking high order questions and whether or not you're encouraging high numbers of students to participate. So for example, one group is working on uh, defined liter literary devices. So um, the possible thing that they could do, a way to get students to be uh, engaged or participatory is to engage them in small group work. And then you can have them engage in um, defining the literacy, literary devices in their own work. There's like four points to it. So one is to define in their own words. The second is to illustrate what the literary device is. A third was to analyze or to create an analogy of that literary device. Um, the literary device is like this or mood is like that and tone is like this other thing. And then the last thing that they could do is to work together as a group to come up with an example of that literary device from a text. So they're working together and they have to understand what literary device is in order to uh, complete all four of these tasks. And they're working in groups to do so. Another example from a group in the class is to use elements of a narrative structure. So again, so you can have students work in groups, but for this one, you can have them create a skit that contains all the features of a narrative element, or they can act out the features of a narrative uh, story. So um, these are just two ways in which you can take your learning objective and really try to find high order thinking and high participatory ways for students to be engaged. All right, so the last thing that I want to talk about is the distinction between planning for yourself and planning for your guide teacher and your supervisor. So when you plan for your teacher and a supervisor, especially using the advice and recommendations that I'm giving you as your ed psych professor, as well as the template that I gave you, um, your guide teacher and supervis supervisor may need a lot less information to feel pretty satisfied that you have planned. Um, but if you fill in that template and you do the things that I said, you, you are going to um, definitely please them with what you can do um, and your planning. So you may feel, but they may require less. But just because they require less from you doesn't mean that you should do less. Demand a lot of yourself. Do a lot more. Think it through. It's, you are new at this, and you are expected to learn a new approach to teaching than what you're familiar with, than what you may have been taught, and, what, and different than what is already out there. But I want you to really um, challenge yourself because prep, preparation is really the key here. Spend the time. It's worth it. The more time that you spend thinking about, oh, you know, I, I can have the students engage in this, I can have them do that, and this will be a good way for them to really challenge their notions about their, you know, their thinking about this particular task. Over time, this kind of planning will get easier and it will become faster. Just like I'm thinking of Jenna and her talking about the snowboarding. Um, it's a lot of work, a lot of effort at first, um, but over time it comes easier. I remember when I first learned how to swim, I mean, just to do 25 yards was just so exhausting. I was out of breath by the time I got to the other edge of the pool, but now it's nothing to do a, a mile. I swim a mile at least three times uh, a week. It's not difficult. It takes time. It takes practice. It's the opportunity to develop that skill. In your lesson plan, 
please don't forget your all the different types of assessments, or at least all the different types of assessments that I talked about. So your informal and your formal, your formative and your summative, please include all of those. They're important. And don't forget to find ways to engage your students with, with regard to the learning objective. You can have them do fun activities, but if it's not related, and if it's not aligned with your learning objectives, then it's just a waste of time. So that's it. Thank you for listening and watching. I'll see you in class.